In this video you will learn about texture baking in 3ds Max. For this we will first prepare our entire geometry, then discover various automatic unwrapping techniques and finally bake all of our lighting information into a single texture. So what we got here is a simple interior scene. We're not going to be discussing on how this here was set up because I have our own dedicated video that you can find in my channel if you're interested in that. Instead, we're going to be talking about light baking. So here I'm going to be using 3ds Max and V-Ray. And that means whenever I move the position of my camera, all of the lighting has to be recalculated from scratch. And you can see that takes a little bit of time. So it's not really possible to walk here through your scene in real time. Everything always has to be recalculated. And sometimes there may be situations where you want to basically bake all of your lighting information into a texture map so that you can easily export all of this into, for example, a game engine. So that is how this would look like, for example. So in here, I basically baked out all of the information into a texture map. And you can see that now you can easily go through your whole scene, you can navigate through everything. And of course, there are some downsides. For example, here, the reflections are not really updated correctly anymore. But overall, you can get a quite nice feeling here of the scene. And you could easily export all of this into a game engine, for example, or a web application, or wherever you would need that. As usual, you can always find all of my scene files on my Patreon together with a whole course on car rendering. So you can check this out if that's interesting for you. Otherwise, let's just jump in and see how this here was set up. So here you can see the scene that I built. It's just a very simple scene here with just a bunch of different furniture and some simple walls, windows, floor, ceiling, and so on. And now we're going to be discussing on what we have to do in order to bake all of this information into a texture map. And the biggest difficulty about this is to generate a correct UV map because you basically can't really have any kind of overlapping UV. So what do I mean by this? Let's just easily create here a simple box with, for example, 100 times 100 times 100 centimeters. And now let's go into the unwrap here and see how the UVs for this box here are set up. So as you can see, there is just one simple square here of the UV. And the reason for that is even the box here, of course, obviously has six different sides, is that in this case, by default, we have overlapping UV. So that means every side here is covering the entire UV space. And we have these kind of like six squares here, which are all overlaying on top of each other. And this for light baking is a no-go. So you can't really have these kind of overlaying UVs. Everything has to be individual so that if we bake our light information for this side here of the box, for example, it would override the other side. So we, we need to kind of individualize all of these different sides in here. So the easiest way to do that is to just use here the flatten mapping option. So if we go inside here, and then we have this dialog that appears up here and we can choose a polygon angle threshold. In this case, let's use the default of 45 degrees. We can use a spacing, which you're gonna see in a second. And we can leave all of this here to their default values. And once we do this, you can see that now we have here six different squares, which are in our entire UV space and they're not overlaying on top of each other. So instead of using this simple box in here, let's go in and delete this and use a slightly more complicated object here, our trusted teapot, for example. Let's also apply an unwrap modifier. Let's open our UV editor. And you can see also in this case, we have overlapping UVs, so we couldn't really bake this. So let's go in and use the flatten mapping option and use a default of 45 here again. And you can see now we have individual UVs for every part, but in this case, it would be spread up into lots of small clusters in here. If we want to, we can basically increase here our angle threshold to, for example, something like 75 degrees. And by this way, we should be getting less clusters, but bigger clusters because more of similar facing normals would be grouped together. 
but you might end up with a higher distortion amount in this textures than in this case. So let's use something like this in here, or let's basically use a slightly lower threshold here for 50. I think like this is a good balance. Now we can check out those kind of buttons down here. So the flatten mapping option already basically lays out all of our different clusters here in the UV space, but there might be some kind of wasted space like this one in here, for example, where if you would pack these different clusters here smarter together, you would have basically more used texture space. And those are what these kind of buttons here are for. For example, we can try out this one here to just pack this together. And this already basically does it quite nicely. We just would need to go in and scale this here up a little bit to something like this. And then in this case here, we would have very, very little wasted texture space basically. With these padding options, you can, for example, let's remove this all the way here to zero. And this basically defines the distance here between our different clusters. So let's pack this here again. And now you can see that we have a much like smaller distance here between those clusters and they can even touch each other entirely. So in this case here, the result is not so good because some of these parts here are even out of the texture space. So let's go back here. Let's try out some other options. We have these custom packing options in here where we can go to the algorithms which are used in order to pack these kind of clusters. I think normally the unfold 3D option here can give quite a nice result. So let's try this. But in this case, I think the previous one was nicer because now we have this empty texture space up here. So let's undo basically a couple of steps to something like this in here. And I think in this case would be the best option for our teapot. So now we relied here entirely on the flatten mapping unwrapping. Of course, we could also go in, let's delete our unwrap and let's use a new one here. And let's open this because this already has different clusters in here. So we could just also recycle the different clusters here. We could just make that they don't overlap each other. So let's try out something like this in here. And now you can see we have basically much cleaner clusters in here and we just basically use these kind of arrange elements here to basically lay them out so that they don't overlap each other anymore. So normally, of course, if you hand unwrap your different objects, you will get much cleaner and nicer result than if you use these kind of automatic options in here. But if you have a big scene and you don't want to unwrap every single object, then those can be a quite good option. So now let's delete here our box and let's just see how we can deal with our room in here. So let's first hide our furniture. We only want to be focusing on the room for now because that's a little bit simpler and also a little bit quicker. So what we have to do now is that we basically combine all of our different objects. So at the moment we have one object here for the wall, one for the ceiling, one for the floor and so on. We want to combine all of those here into one object. So let's select our wall, for example, and let's go to the attach options in here. And let's basically just combine all of those objects here into one. Once we do this, of course, we need to match our material IDs to a new material. So that means basically our floor will get a different material ID than the wall and the windows and so on. And also it will automatically create a sub object material. So let's do this. And now basically everything here is one room. We can just call this here geo room, for example. And then we can move on to the next step, which would be to generate the UVs for the entire room. So for this, let's also add an unwrap UV W modifier. And then let's go in and not choose our map channel to be channel one because channel one is basically already taken. For example, we have some textures on our walls, on our floor and so on. They all use the map channel one. So we can't really change the UVs of this one in here. So let's use a new map channel, in this case, map channel two. And now it asks us if we want to take some of the UVs from 
map channel one and use them in map channel two. This we can do with this move button in here. But in our case, we don't really need them. We can abandon them. So we start with completely empty or new UVs, which look like this, just a top down projection basically. And now we could go in and use our flatten mapping approach in here. And let's see how this will work out. So let's press OK. And this now will take already a lot longer compared to the teapot because we have a bit more complex geometry. So I will pause this video for a while and then get back once it's finished. So here you can see the result. You can see we have a lot of these kind of small places in here, but there's very little space which is wasted. So I think by default it gives already quite a nice result in this case in here. So now we have a completely new UV layout in our map channel 2, which doesn't have any overlapping faces in here. So all of our polygons here have an individual space in here. So then we are ready for light baking. But before we do that, let's just verify that everything is correct. And we can easily do that in the V-Ray render settings by just applying here a simple material override. Let's use a new V-Ray material. Let's open our material editor so we can pick our material that we have on our room. You can see we have a sub object material that has all of our initial materials here now grouped in these different sub objects with different material IDs. And now let's use our new material here. Let's just give this, for example, a checker map. And then because we have here the map channel two, let's use also a map channel of two in here. Let's use a much higher tiling, for example, a tiling of 100. And then also here in the material override settings, I just went in and basically preserved all of our original properties, except the diffuse basically. And now if we do a rendering, let's see how the result will be. And the goal is that basically we have this kind of checker pattern now that's appearing here on our objects. And it should have all a uniform scaling here so that we don't have some checker patterns which on some parts are much bigger than on other parts because we want to have a very uniform texture size here for our whole room. In this case, I think it looks good. Everything has the correct size here in our checker texture. And now we can finally go in and basically do a light baking. For this, we first would need to go in and disable, of course, here our material override so that we don't really bake here our checker texture, but that we use our original materials here instead. So now finally for the light baking, you can go to the rendering tab and then use this render to texture option in here. And then once this here is loaded, it will select the object that you want to bake. So in this case here, it's our geometry room. And then we need to enable basically the mapping coordinates which we want to use. So we can either do a automatic unwrap and that's basically just what we did here by hand in this unwrap UVW modifier. You can do this also automatically directly in the render to texture dialog. But I think it's better to do it in here because then you really see how the unwrap here looks like. So we are going to be using the existing channel. And of course, we're not going to be using channel one because this one has all of our texture coordinates for the textures which we use in our scene in here. So let's use the channel two. And now we can just define the output. So in here, we're going to be defining in this case here a V-Ray complete map. So it means it tries to bake all the information which is bakeable into a texture map. So let's use this add elements button in here. And then we can also choose a texture resolution. In this case, let's use 1K here for testing. And then basically everything in here we can leave at default. I think let's just use the option to only render the files because we don't want to automatically apply some material afterwards. And now we can just use the render option here. So now you can see that it opens the 3ds Max dialog, but also the V-Ray dialog in here. 
and you can see our UV space that we laid out here earlier. And now all of the information here will be baked into a texture map. You can see we have here our wood floor with these bright parts of the sun which shine through the window here on the floor. And basically now this whole texture map here will be generated. So now the rendering is finished and it's a good idea to check here our settings in the frame buffer. So we can see we have some lens effects here from our original rendering of the room. You can see this also applies here to the texture map. So we want to disable this here basically. And then we can go in and save our current channel. Let's just call this here texture room EXR for example and then save this and then we can close the entire dialog in here. So now if we want to we can also show this in our viewport. For this we can disable here our map scenes and peel scenes in the unwrap UVW modifier so that we don't get confused here in our viewport. Let's open the material editor and let's use a shell material for our geometry that we have in here and they can basically define different materials that will be used for the viewport or for the renderer. So for the renderer let's use our multi sub-object material and in the viewport let's use a different material. It just added this kind of standard legacy material that's fine because we can now just use here a bitmap and then open the bitmap which we exported just now and we can show this in our viewport. And now of course it's wrong because we have to use the correct channel and that was if you remember correctly channel 2. So let's use channel 2 for this. And now you can see that this shows up in our viewport. We can then go in and use a flat color here and then we don't have any kind of additional shading in our viewport. So you can see now we have the light here baked and appear in our room. And of course the texture resolution of 1K is way too small to basically bake every of the details here in a correct way. So you can see you have lots of noise and lots of splotches. So in order to avoid this you would need to basically bake out everything in a much higher resolution. Nonetheless since we're using a shell material if we now go in and render again you can see that now while rendering our original material would be loaded. We don't really have our baked texture map. So there's a nice way to basically keep both of these different materials and settings in your scene. So you can still go in and make renderings while in your viewport you can see the baked view here of this room. So now for the final version of this room. I went in and also included all of the furniture into my geometry and also unwrapped everything as the map channel too, the same way that I just showed you with only the rooms. Just once you add the furniture it becomes much more slower, it will take much longer time because all of this furniture here has much higher polygon count. So if you use automatic ways to unwrap everything in non overlapping UVs it will take maybe a few minutes or even hours until you will get an automatic unwrap to have everything here as non overlaying UVs. But you can see once you did this basically you can get some quite nice results. I also went in and baked here everything in a much higher resolution. So this one here has basically 8K resolution. So that's probably enough to cover here the entire room. So that basically concludes this video in here. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something from it. If you find this channel helpful you can subscribe to it or you can go the extra mile and join my Patreon where you can also find a lot of bonus content and also a whole course on car rendering. So check this out if that's interesting for you. Otherwise see you next tutorial. Take care and see you soon.